the single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. In this video, Andrew Huberman has created a morning routine to foster optimal brain health that's based on the understanding of our brain and body as valuable assets. The primary concept to grasp here is assets. Your body is an asset with which you can improve if you happen to take good care of it. The essential concept here is that a well-structured and meticulously planned morning routine can have a direct influence on our mental well-being. In fact, it will have a direct influence on your mental well-being. Rising early can set the tone for the day, allowing us to be more alert and more focused. It also helps regulate our body's internal clock, known as the circadian rhythm, improving the quality of our sleep. And the key is consistency here. Waking up early every day helps the brain get into a healthy rhythm, making it easier for you to manage your day effectively. And this is only the beginning. The amazing changes that you're going to feel from this routine are going to blow your mind. Uh, I'm waking up these days around 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. I'm trying to go to sleep by about 10.30 p.m. Sometimes it's 11, sometimes it's 10. I wake up, um, and I have to be careful here because whenever I've described my routine in a little bit of detail, people always say, I can't believe you don't go to the bathroom. So yeah. I want to be clear, I, yeah, I take care of my basic functions. Um, but when I wake up, I make a beeline for sunlight. Uh, so I'm going to get sunlight in my eyes for the, you know, I'll probably go into the grave saying this. So forgive me if people have heard me say this before, but the single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. it takes about 10 minutes or so. Um, if you live in a cloudy area, if you're in the UK in the winter, Yes, or the summer, or the summer. Maybe you resort to some artificial light as a replacement, but as much as one can get bright, natural, and if not natural, artificial light in your eyes early in the day, without sunglasses, contacts and eyeglasses are fine. Don't try and do it through a window or windshield. It's going to take far too long. This sets in motion a huge number of different neurobiological and, and hormonal cascades that are good for you, reduces stress late at night, offsets cortisol, a million different things really that are good for you. So I get that. Getting the main points from the video is simple. Andrew employs remarkable techniques to optimize well-being, one which involves the utilization of natural light as a fundamental pillar in this routine. This practice plays a vital role in establishing the body's circadian rhythm, thereby enhancing mood and energy levels. In instances where mornings are characterized by dimness, a light box can be employed to simulate the advantageous effects of natural sunlight. Moreover, adequate hydration immediately upon waking up assumes paramount importance here. In this regard, Andrew suggests the inclusion of lemon or apple cider vinegar to promote gastrointestinal health. Given the significant correlation between gut health and cognitive function, ensuring the digestive system's optimal functioning is critical. Really, the, the quality studies on humans that have looked at this say, try and get as much natural light as you can in the morning hours, whenever it is that that is for you, especially the first three hours after waking. If you can work outside, great. If you can get near a window, because as opposed to just in a dark conference room, that's better. But if you can get outside, that would be fantastic. So I, I get sunlight, I hydrate, I drink water, and then yerba mate is my favorite form of coffee, uh, excuse me, caffeine. I, I am a fan of water with element. Yep. Before I had element packets, I would just take a little bit of, of sea salt. Huberman strongly advocates for the inclusion of meditation in his daily morning routine. He firmly believes that dedicating a minimum of 10 minutes per day to this practice can yield remarkable benefits. Imagine that, 10 minutes every day, such as reducing stress and enhancing mental clarity, Engaging in meditation serves as a simple yet powerful means to prioritize and nurture our brain health, as it promotes relaxation and aids in regulating our autonomic nervous system. In addition to meditation, Huberman emphasizes regular physical exercise as a significant point. Physical activity improves our overall fitness, it boosts our energy levels, and it contributes to optimal cardiovascular health. By incorporating both meditation and exercise into our daily lives, we can embark on a holistic journey towards enhanced well-being and vitality. I do everything I can to not do email, not do social media, and to take care of a few critical tasks. These days, I'm, I have this obsession with trying to do one cognitively hard thing a day, one, and one physically hard thing a day. Now, it does not extreme physical, not David Goggins level workouts or anything, but um, 
In that 90 minutes, I'll typically try and read a research article start to finish, or I'll work on a document that I might be doing a grant or research paper or planning a podcast or researching a podcast. I try and get my brain into kind of a linear mode. I try and narrow that aperture. So if I don't, the distraction that's created by social media and interactions with others can kind of wick out into the rest of the day. So I'm not necessarily trying to finish something in that time, but I try and do something challenging. I experience great pleasure from battling through something mentally challenging. But that's something that I built up since my university years when I was about you know 19 or so, got serious about school and really started to experience the, the deep pleasure of like, ah, oh, I figured that out or like, that was really tough. I don't always succeed, but that's what I'm doing in that hour to 90 minutes. But I confess sometimes we'll take a walk during that time and maybe talk through some things that are, that are challenging, you know, or, or sometimes I get lazy and, and I, I'll miss a day of that cognitive challenge. Then I do caffeine about um, 90 to 120 minutes um, after waking. And even though I prefer to work out earlier, I generally will then do some sort of physical workout. I have a very consistent routine. I've done it for 30 years where I weight train for 45 or minutes to an hour every other day. And occasionally I take an extra day off mm. and occasionally due to travel or other commitments, I'll occasionally double up two days and then take two days off. Yep. So it's really boring, you know, talk about workout schedules, but it's really simple. It's like, you know, I'll do a kind of pushing day, rest, pulling day, upper body, push up, rest, upper body, pull, rest, and then legs take two days off, something like that. Always jogging or skipping rope. Those are my favorite forms of cardio, sometimes swimming, but typically I'll go running for 30 to 45 minutes. Or if I'm feeling a little bit lazier, because I always find the high intensity stuff to be easier than the long drawn out stuff. I'll sometimes throw on a, a weight vest, a 30 or 50 pound weight vest, and I'll go out for a shorter run. I'll occasionally um, do a backwards, you know, hill walk, um, or throw on the weight vest for that. Um, we sometimes will get bands and we'll tap. So there's a great way to combine this. We will sometimes get two people in one of these thick bands, do hill walks in the morning while getting our sunlight. Yeah. As, but that I don't really consider a workout. I consider that just kind of rehabilitate us at movement. So yeah. I'm, on the off days I'm doing cardio and sometimes that's in the morning, sometimes that's in the evening. I do not like to weight train in the second half of the day because I like to be really caffeinated when I weight train. I like to listen to loud, fast music. Most of the time, not always. I keep my phone out or off of for most workouts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Podcasts maybe if I'm running, yep. but I really try hard when I'm working out to just focus on the workout. And those workouts, the weight training workouts are always 10 minutes or so of warm up, and then no more than 40 to 50 minutes of really hard work. If I do train hard any longer, I don't recover enough to be able to come in a few days later. And when I train that way, I generally make pretty consistent progress. In Huberman's daily routine, one important aspect is having a nutritious breakfast that provides a steady stream of energy all day long. This means eating a balanced meal that includes protein, healthy fats, and complex carbohydrates. For example, having eggs, avocado, and whole grain toast can be really, really helpful. According to Huberman, having a healthy breakfast can improve our ability to think and concentrate, making us feel more productive. It's like giving our brain the fuel that it needs to work its best. By starting the day with a nutritious meal, we're setting ourselves up for success and giving ourselves the best chance to have a productive and fulfilling day ahead. So it's really worth taking the time to have a good breakfast. Now, occasionally I'll wake up really hungry if I didn't eat that well the night before. Yeah. But typically the after I train, I, yeah, I'll eat, I like oatmeal after I train, oatmeal, fruit, some fish oil, protein drink, and then maybe 90 to 120 minutes after that. I'll have a real lunch. My lunch is pretty much the biggest meal of the day. If I have my way, it'll be a steak, a salad, maybe a little more starch, although I sort of got it earlier. Yep. Um, Brazil nuts. I, that meal sometimes can extend longer and longer. <laughs> I love to being eat. A feeding fast, I love yeah. to eat. Yeah. So I'll eat. And then I confess, I usually will work a little bit more for about 30 minutes or an hour, typically email. And then I'll take a 10 to 30 minute yoga nidra nap or a nap mm -hmm. and then come back refreshed. I wake up grumpy from naps sometimes, I'm told. Sometimes I wake up from naps, it's really pleasant. I'll occasionally do, if the nap is early enough in the day, afterwards I'll have a you know a nice double espresso mm. and get back into work. That's the hardest part of the day, actually. If I was well-structured in the early part of the day, it's that 2 or 3 p.m. The key is then to try and get something really useful done cognitively again. So some people might look at this and say, wait, you're working for an hour in the morning and 30 minutes here and an hour in the afternoon. When are you actually working? But 
it's really about the depth of the trench when you're working. And so if I'm gonna drop into something again for a few hours in the afternoon, I'm really gonna drop into it. And that's typically phone off and out of the room. And my goal is to get to the evening time so that I can do the things that I want in the yep. evening. Yep. I can enjoy, like I'm always setting a goal of the next time block. So this is something I've been doing for a long time, but even more so lately. I don't think my goal in the next hour is to do blank. I think this is dopamine uh, reward predictions uh, in action. I think, okay, if I get this workout done, then I'll be able to eat at more or less the same time, which I enjoy, and then something else will happen. So I'm very focused on what I'm doing, but I'm doing it for the purposes of like opening up the next door to the next thing. So if I can get that afternoon work block done, I'm thinking, ah, if I can just really get this podcast recorded, I experience so much pleasure from spending a week or two researching something and then putting some structure on. And as you know, I mean, podcasting is its own, its own sort of natural drug uh, it just feels good if you enjoy doing this sort of thing. Um, so typically we'll be starting late in the day now and going till pretty late. <laughs>